Hi, welcome to another fantastic podcast from Mishti. Today's topic is inheritance planning or will or estate planning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, there are two things certain in life, death and taxes. And inheritance planning is actually a mix of both. I know it's a sensitive topic and I know a lot of us don't want to talk about it and perhaps never talk about it when it comes to our parents. But if we've learned anything from COVID, I think having a good financial plan and an inheritance plan is something that's no longer just a fancy word. It's a need of the hour. And there are lots of complexities when it comes to inheritance planning and there are lots of details, fine details that a lot of us NRIs and OCIs are not very familiar with, which is exactly why we collected all the questions we had from our tribe when it came to inheritance planning. And we went and got ourselves a great expert on the other side, Suresh from PropSaver to help us answer some of these questions. We hope that this podcast is, serves you well and helps you kind of make an informed decision about what you should be doing well for your family. So please, without further ado, here's Suresh from PropSaver. The first question we've got is what uh, taxes do in India and in UK on properties inherited in India by citizens overseas? So if I have my parents in India and I inherit the property, what kind of taxes should I be thinking about living in the UK? So there is no inheritance tax in India. Okay. Whether a person uh, who has inherited is a resident or non-resident Indian. Irrespective of the value yeah, of the properties. Okay. But uh, I'm sure you will be the best persons uh, to give info about the uh, inheritance tax in UK. There's plenty. I believe yeah. it is 40% if I'm yeah. right. It's pretty high, yes. But okay. in India, absolutely uh, be assured there is no inheritance tax as of now. Um, the other thing you talked about, Suresh, when we had the initial conversation was about inheritance is, uh, yes, there are no necessarily taxes associated with it, but how you inherit a property is a function of which, it could be a function of religion or a community that you belong to, how it's divided amongst inheritors in that sense. Could you maybe just elaborate a little bit of the few examples you've seen where this becomes a bit, bit different? Laws in India have given an option to every citizen. Okay. to have their succession planning right. for their assets, estate planning for their assets. This could be by way of a will or they can create a trust. Right. Law has given an option. If the person does not use this option, mm -hmm. then law will take its course and the inheritance of the asset held by the deceased person shall follow the rules of the succession laws. Okay. That's where the complexities arise. Okay. So in India, we have Hindu Succession Act, uh, Indian Succession Act, and Muslim personal laws are Sharia law and planning right. for their assets, estate planning for their assets. This could be by way of a will or they can create a trust. Right. Law has given an option. If the person does not use this option, mm -hmm. then law will take its course and the inheritance of the asset held by the deceased person shall follow the rules of the succession laws. Okay. And that's where the complexities arise. Okay. So in India, we have Hindu Succession Act, uh, Indian Succession Act, and Muslim personal laws are Sharia law. So Hindu Succession Act applies to Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, and Jains. Whereas Indian Succession Act applies to Christians and Parsis. And also to those couples or to the estate of those couples who belong to different religions and their marriage is solemnized under the Special Marriages Act. Right, right. So you see that how here itself the complex. Suddenly it becomes complex because now it becomes a function of, and that's why I think what you're suggesting in terms of will planning, like having yes. a will in place, avoids the complexity. Of complexity. Figure out which Correct. mode Correct. you end up going Correct. down. Absolutely, uh, very, very helpful there. Um, let me throw the other question at you, Suresh, which, which has come. Uh, is the capital gains on inherited property in India calculated from the date of inheritance or is it as at the date of acquisition, like uh, the rule in India, while paying the capital gains on that? Okay. So the capital gains uh, on the sale of property uh, depends upon the holding period of the property or asset. So depending upon the holding period, it can be uh, classified as a long term or short term capital asset. Okay. So uh, for this purpose, the period of holding uh, for computation of capital gains in India is calculated from the date of acquisition of the property by a person from whom it is inherited. 
So let us say my father has brought a property somewhere in 1980s. His demise in 2006, I inherited the property. Mm-hmm. And today I sold this property. So to compute the holding period, mm-hmm. it starts from 1980 when my father acquired the property. So understood. So the capital gains is actually calculated from the point, the first point where the, when your father had purchased the property. It's not right. from the point when you inherited it. I inherited it. Ah, so similarly, much. Okay. similarly, even the cost of acquisition of the property is a cost paid by my father. Right. Okay, not the cost when I acquired or inherited. Inherited. Okay. Understood. So, but, but uh, in India, we have a benefit of indexation uh, okay. to compute the cost of acquisition, mm-hmm. uh, indexed cost of acquisition. The base year is 2001. I see. So okay. it's indexed so in 2001. Yeah. So in, if the property is acquired before April 2001, first April 2001, Right. Then the cost of acquisition uh, will be the market value of the property as on 1st April 2001. I see. Okay. If the property is acquired after 1st April 2001, then the actual cost that is paid. Understood. So that actually brings me to the next question, which is a very valid one. Uh, How much tax is to be paid on the Indian estate owned directly or via inheritance for the inheritor? And how can one reduce the tax liability legally before, uh, if you need to repatriate your money back, uh, what are a few things people need to consider? So the tax on uh, sale of asset depends upon the holding period, whether it's a long term or a short term. Right. Suppose if you talk again, if it's a long term, it depends upon whether the asset sold is property or a financial assets like mutual funds and so on. Right. Okay. So people are more concerned today about the sale of uh, uh, immobile property. Yes. Okay. If the immobile property is held for two years or more, it is considered as a long-term capital asset. Understood. 24 months. Okay. okay. And this 24 months is calculated from the date the individual uh, purchased it. So first the, purchase. So the parent, when they have parent purchased. Who purchased. Correct. Interesting. Okay. So when it's a long-term capital gain, the tax rate is 20% on the capital gain. Okay. It is same for resident or non-resident. Okay. Okay. If the asset is a short-term capital asset, then as per the uh, applicable tax labs, there are different tax labs. Okay. okay. A chart accountant can help you in doing that. Uh, repatriation, yes, it can be done subject to certain conditions. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think uh, a chart accountant or a tax consultant can be a better person uh, to give you more information about the repatriation of money. Yes, it can be done, but there are certain conditions. Okay. The tax that you calculate on the inherited property. So let's do property mm-hmm. first, and we talk about financial assets as well, because you might inherit both of these. So on the property, for example, when you inherit a property and you are, let's say, liquidating that asset, the tax that you have to pay on this, does that also get equally distributed or distributed per the succession law? Yes, yes. And my father has left behind your property. We are uh, three siblings. Right. This property is sold. Assume we three are staying abroad in different countries. Yeah. Okay. So as per the succession laws, we are the legal has. Okay. Right. The capital gain is distributed equally to all these legal has. Understood. Understood. And even the tax also. Even the tax is equally distributed amongst them. Absolutely. Understood. Uh, what happens in the unfortunate event that one of the sibling passes away as well? Uh, do you still need, are there provisions in the will uh, that you need to already inbuilt for event like that or does that automatically fall into a different kind of plan it all depends upon the way a will is drafted okay as a estate planner uh, i recommend to my clients to have a successive inheritor also so you give it to you wish to give it to a fine we make the provisions yeah in the event if a predeceases mm-hmm. in right. such a scenario to whom this asset should go i see so you okay. feel like it's actually helpful to have that second layer of protection second layer. Well and built. Other, so it avoids making a will again. Understood. Um, that actually makes me uh, come to a question which I should have asked up front. Will and trust. Why would I choose one over the other? Um, what's, you know, what's the difference? The purpose and objective of will and trust is different. Okay. They are not competing. 
to say which is best. Right. So will not trust. Uh, we need to choose depending upon the objectives of the uh, person or the family, the mm -hmm. nature of asset, and so on. Right. Okay. Say to take an example, if my desire is just to pass on my assets to next of my family members after my life, mm -hmm. a will would suffice. It is a simpler way to uh, transfer or bequeath the assets. Right. But I have a family members. Uh, who cannot hold this property for some reasons, or they are not capable of managing these properties. Like a lot of the NRIs we're dealing with. Exactly. Right. It could be NRIs is one reason. Yeah. In India, I also work with uh, families who have a special children. Right. Yep. Okay. So uh, in such cases, uh, bequeathing the property uh, by a will is not of use because they, they don't have a capability or capacities to manage. Fair enough. Right. In this case, we recommend them to have a trust. Understood. A so trust the is trust, an arrangement. I see. So is the trust that effectively the asset goes into, but who manages the trust? Are there okay. executors? Who, who is appointed to manage the trust? So in India, a trust can be settled or established under the Indian Trust Act. Mm -hmm. A trust is an arrangement between the three parties. The first party is the founder of the trust, mm -hmm. also called as uh, settler or author of the trust. Right. The second parties are the trustees mm -hmm. with whom the trust property is conveyed and mm -hmm. they hold and manage this property and pass on the benefits of the trust property to for, for the well-being of the beneficiaries. So uh, it is the trustees who manage the assets and the settler or founder of the trust will appoint the trustees. Understood. And does that have to be within the family or is that, are there, like in the UK, you have external agencies who can also yeah. be trustees. And that's- Same in India. It can be within the family, friends, known persons, or external agencies who are professionals. Understood. It will be that way. Understood. Um, so let me ask you a really um, interesting question, which I'm sure a lot of other people think about, but not necessarily verbalize it. So let's say you have, Two parents who are um, well now and they're putting their will together. How should an elderly couple be thinking about putting their will? Should they be thinking about their spouse first, uh, their children next, or should they be thinking, you know, what is the way that one should be thinking about structuring your will? And this is more of a um, advice for you know our elderly parents back back in India. What would you suggest? So again, it depends upon uh, the needs uh, and the holding of the assets or number of properties uh, a family has. Right. So let us take an example to understand it better. A mm -hmm. couple who has only one or two properties. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this case, the first priority is that uh, it should go to the surviving spouse and then to the children. That's what we advise. Right. Because first of all, their security is very important during their life. Yes. Okay. But I come across uh, couples uh, who, have, who hold multiple properties, even to the extent of 40, 50 properties. Right. Okay. Wow. So there is no point and enough financial assets, crores of rupees. Yeah. Yeah. So there is no point in transferring to the spouse. Right. Okay. And again, from the spouse to the children, there is a right. lot of cost involved in the transmission of the assets. I see. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. when the surviving spouse has enough financial security or transfer the assets and the investments to provide enough financial security to the surviving spouse during his or her life. Right. And rest what is not necessary, normally I recommend advice to transfer directly to the children so that we can avoid a lot of paperwork and cost of transmission. In two steps. That In two steps. Very, that's very helpful advice. But as, as you said, making sure that the surviving spouse is first, fully capable. First. Of course, would, that is the first under part. Under no circumstance would you recommend that a, a will is constructed so that it goes directly to the no, kid no. and not to the surviving spouse because you could have, you inevitably will run into Karen. situations that you, you don't know. Inherited agricultural land mm -hmm. from family traditionally, uh, mm -hmm. but obviously as an RI, that's something that they would never themselves engage in, right? Karen. What would be your advice to them? Is it NRIs can inherit the agricultural land. Yeah. There are two options for them after the inheritance. Either yeah. they hold and manage it or sell it off. Right. Okay. And so if they are not in a position to manage, better to sell it off. Okay. And so that's the other thing that um, I wanted to ask you for people, once you, 
once the will is executed and you inherit mm. a property mm-hmm. what next somebody in india has to be there to liquidate the property to either manage it or to liquidate it uh, is that something that you um can provide support in uh, should families need it are there specific areas in india where you're able to assist with that or uh, what's a, you know what's the best advice for for people who might be in that situation right uh, to sell the properties which are inherited there are two aspects one is uh, to find the prospective buyer mm-hmm. and second point here is uh, to uh, give support in due diligence documentation taxation and other aspects yeah these two are two different approaches to be followed so we are into the second aspect we support in documentation due diligence advice on uh, repatriation and so on right. but finding a buyer they have to find it locally yes absolutely absolutely so for anybody who has inherited a property two key steps that they have to do is find effectively a buyer on the other side uh but then equally importantly if not more important is making sure the documents are credible Got on both sides before the transaction is executed Got Got i'm it. sure there's plenty of fraud fraudulent absolutely uh, failed cases as a consequence of not appropriately due diligence in your documents yeah in my practice i see uh, at least 6 out of 10 cases uh when the product, property is uh, put for sale the right. deal gets delayed or cancelled due right. to a deficiency in the documents wow okay so we always recommend sellers before you put the property for sale yeah. get your documents verified by a competent person right do it proper packaging of your product so that it gets sold yeah. the only thing the seller has to focus is on price negotiation true and then your pro- your property should be picked up once price is determined right and you are able to help that we suppose yeah you're able to help with excellent um and last question suresh how are you uh, engaging with uh, the people who are writing the wills so the senior citizens and you know uh, it doesn't have to be senior citizens but in our case it is it is uh, those folks is it is it a mind shift change after covid are you seeing people getting a bit more clear in why they need to do this yes covid uh, has made the people uh, to think about uh, estate planning uh, personally i have seen there's a lot of uh, clients approaching me uh, post covid uh, uh, for will and trust yeah in fact uh, last year i had a situation where a person has postponed to get it admitted in the hospital due to covid because he want to execute the will and then get it to the <laughs> hospital covid okay, era uh, i found uh, there is a Uh, acceptance among the younger generation yeah with uh, with the older generation to have a proper estate planning excellent okay so the people who are in their between 40s and 50s mm-hmm. around 50s in fact they come forward uh, voluntarily and uh, talk about a succession plan compared to the people who are 60s and 70s they think that right. it is not necessary for them but right. covid made these serious reasons also to think about the estate plans estate plan. so uh, uh, overall you know now because of the covid and uh, generational shift uh, among the uh, uh, present generation of 40s to 60s yeah. so now you see that there is a, a large number of people between 40 to uh, 60 70 they yeah. are volunteering to have a prop, uh, adequate estate plan we hope you enjoyed that podcast Please keep your questions coming whether it is about inheritance planning whether it's about financial planning in investments uh, healthcare whatever it be for your aging parents in India Mishi tribe is here to help and if you haven't already joined our tribe please consider doing so we are one community trying to find solutions for ourselves as a community and not as individuals so the more love we get the more bigger our community gets the better and far reaching our solutions can be as well So if you can share the love with other friends and family who belong in the same boat and the same community please do so we really appreciate it until next time thanks for watching and see you soon